There's been a couple of turning points in my life, times that I look back to and I can pinpoint exactly where I had that paradigm shift. And one of the most important ones for me was the end of year nine. Before I tell you why, let me tell you about the pre year nine shigs. I'm not gonna exaggerate and say I was depressed or anything, but I didn't really like myself that much. I was quite chubby, borderline fat. And although I had some friends, I could tell that they didn't really respect me and that would affect my confidence. And on top of all of that, my grades weren't even that good. I was sort of just there, not really contributing anything to the people around me. But now fast forward to around the middle of year nine, I come across a video that changes my life. Now, I don't really remember any details about the video, like the person who made it, the title or anything. But what I remember was that it was about sleep. That video cleared up all of my misconceptions about sleep and gave me an insight to the life I could be living if I invested a little amount of time into improving my sleep. And when I implemented it, I genuinely couldn't believe the difference in my life. I mean, could you believe that these pictures are months apart? I lost 14 kilograms that year. I started to like myself more, which made me more confident. So I made more friends and I also improved on the relationships that I already had. But not only that though, I also saw a significant jump in my grades despite not really putting that much more effort into studying, which is why I hope that this video can be something similar. A video for someone who was in the same position as I was in year nine so that inshallah they could also change their lives. And so the first thing you need to know about sleep is that it's not really continuous, it has cycles. If you want, you could try this out for your own. Have a clock or a digital watch on you while you sleep and keep track of the amount of times you wake up every night. Now I did this for a couple of months and I noticed that I'd wake up around two to three times a night and every single time between those times that I'd wake up, it would always be around an hour and a half between those times. I only started noticing waking up in the middle of the night when I started to wear the watch because usually we do wake up in the middle of the night, it's normal, but we don't really pay attention to it. It's not really that significant so we forget about it because we sleep as soon as we wake up. Now that one hour and a half period that I talked about between every single time I would wake up in the night, that's a sleep cycle. And so to keep it short, our sleep is not continuous, it's discrete. We sleep in 90 minute cycles. Now this is important because back in the day we didn't really have alarms. We would usually rely on our bodies to wake us up. And the important part to note is that the human body can really only wake itself up at the end of a sleep cycle. So if you force yourself to wake up in the middle of a sleep cycle, no matter what, you're gonna be tired. My bro science explanation for this is that, well, in a sleep cycle, you're gonna have hormones being released at certain times. And those hormones have to be cleared up before you could wake up. But if you wake up in the middle of a sleep cycle, those tired hormones are still there. And so you're going to be tired. Of course, there's probably way more detail to this. I'm not a scientist. This is just the way I like to understand it. And that's why sometimes you might sleep eight or nine hours. And when you wake up, you're still tired. That's because despite getting in a decent amount of sleep, you've still interrupted a sleep cycle. So you'll feel tired. Now there's two solutions for this. And the first one is to completely ditch alarms. But I'll be honest, even though this is the best case scenario, it's very, very unreasonable, which is why the second solution is the one I'd go for. Anytime before you sleep, go to a website called sleepcalculator.com. I'm not even sponsored by them, but it's such a good website that has helped me out for the past five years that they kind of deserve a shout out. Now the website is very simple and it has two options. One of the options is if you were to sleep right now, so take the time on your phone, if you were to sleep, what time should you set your alarm clock so that you wake up at the end of a sleep cycle? And so it'll give you a bunch of times, they're going to be 90 minutes apart and you choose one of them, you're usually going to choose the one that's like seven and a half hours after the time you sleep. And then you set your alarm clock for that time. And the second option they give you is that you could choose a time, let's say you want to wake up at 8 a.m. And then it will tell you exactly what time you should sleep so that you could catch that sleep cycle. Now, of course, it assumes that you're not going to sleep straight away. It gives you around 15 minutes of time for you to fall asleep. I personally think it's a very simple tool that will genuinely change the way you sleep. Now, before I move on to the second point, I do hope that you're taking notes and listening well, because some of these tips are taken straight out of the ultimate guide to acing your GCSEs. You can find more tips like these, as well as everything you need from A to Z to get the top grades at GCSEs in the first link in the description. Just look at what these guys that took it have to say and also i think that it's a bit too late to join something like this but this is a program that you could finish in a weekend and implement straight away no matter if you're four months or three weeks out of an exam i guarantee you that you could find benefit in it and also the principles explained within the program are applicable to a levels in uni and so on i use the same exact techniques at gcse's and a levels to get the top grades and if you somehow don't benefit then we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee so there's no risk whatsoever if you're interested click the first link in the description now my second piece of advice is try your best to wake up and sleep at the same exact time every single day see when i was in school i tried to sleep around 9.30 to 10 p.m. every single day, even on weekends. Now that might sound a bit extreme, but I'm gonna explain why. So your body has its own internal clock called the circadian rhythm, and your body always tries to align itself with it. See, a lot of people don't realize this, but it's actually better for you to get six to seven hours of sleep consistently if you're sleeping and waking up at the same time every single day, compared to if you're sleeping eight to nine hours every day, but one day you're sleeping at 10 p.m., and then the next day you're sleeping at 2 a.m. So your body loves consistency. So when you're constantly changing up your sleep schedule, you're always confusing your body. You're not really giving it a, a basic foundation to work with. Hormones will be released at the wrong times, your body's confused, and so you're never really gonna get a good night's sleep. For the next two weeks, try this. Pick a time to sleep by and a time to wake up by and stick to it for the next two weeks only. By the end of it, I can guarantee you that you're gonna experience energy like you haven't before, and your brain is gonna be extremely sharp. 
the cognitive abilities are going to be through the roof and someone's going to make studying much easier. They even did studies on people that work consistent work shifts compared to people that do irregular work shifts. They noticed that the people that do irregular work shifts, even if they get the same amount of sleep in, they're at a far larger risk of health problems and also cognitive problems, meaning they wouldn't get the top grades. Now, my final piece of advice is to really watch your caffeine intake. When I was in year 10 and year 11, there wasn't really that many people around me drinking coffee. But then when year 12 and year 13 came along, it started to feel like all of my friends are borderline abusing coffee. Now, don't get me wrong, coffee in itself is not bad for you, but misusing it is. According to the FDA, the half-life of coffee is around 5 hours. That means that if you drink a cup of coffee at 5 p.m., by the time you go to sleep at 10 p.m., half of that caffeine is still in your system, affecting you. That's why if you want to drink any sort of caffeinated drink, you know, coffee, tea, or whatever, try to make it as early as possible, ideally before 2 p.m. Me personally, I drink coffee a couple of times a week, not really because I want energy or anything, I just really like the way it tastes. Coffee can be a very powerful tool for studying, but if you drink it too late, it's going to affect the quality of your sleep. So you're going to wake up groggy the next day, which means that your studying is going to be even less efficient. So you might reach for the cup of coffee again, and that's just the whole cycle that keeps on going. And you might say, but I drink coffee at 7 or 8 p.m. and I still sleep fine. That might be true, but caffeine doesn't only affect how likely you are to fall asleep. It also affects the quality of your sleep. You might have fallen asleep quickly, but that doesn't mean that you're not going to wake up tired the next day because your sleep quality was harmed. Most of the information in this video was taken from my personal experience, as well as research that I've done from books like Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. If you have time, read the book or watch a summary of it. It's genuinely one of those books that could change your life. If you're interested, it's linked in the description.